Assalamu alaikum, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today, presentation on bradycardia. My name is Ahmed Al-Hadidi, emergency medicine consultant. Uh, our objective from uh, our presentation today is to talk about definition and the causes of bradycardia and uh, to illustrate the bradycardia algorithm for European Resuscitation Council, how to do transcutaneous pacemaker, and the differences between European Resuscitation Council bradycardia algorithm and Resuscitation Council UK algorithm and American Heart Association algorithm. So, Bradycardia means heart rate less than 60 beat, beat per minute. This is in adults. Uh, there is many causes for bradycardia, uh, like myocardial ischemia or infarction. Some drugs like calcium channel blockers, beta blockers, and digoxin, hypoxia, electrolyte imbalance, uh, like hyperkalemia, hypothyroidism, heart block, and sick sinus syndrome, increased intracerebral pressure, severe hypothermia, physiological causes like deep sleep and in athletes. So this is the bradycardia algorithm for European Resuscitation Council, a new guidelines in 2021. Uh, we will discuss it uh, step by step, point by point. So first, when we uh, receive patient with bradycardia, first things to do is to assess the ABCD approach like any critically ill patient. So during doing ABCD approach, we'll monitor blood pressure and we'll do 12 lead ECG and uh, we'll check saturation, give oxygen if saturation is less than 94, start uh, our inserting IV line, recording 12 lead ECG. And if there is any reversible cause, we can uh, treat like electrolyte imbalance or hypovolemia or hypoxia. Then we'll check for life-threatening features like shock, syncope, myocardial ischemia, and heart failure symptoms. If any of these symptoms are present, yes, we'll immediately give atropine 0.5 milligram intravenous pulse and check if there is response to atropine or no, if there is a satisfactory response or no, if there is satisfactory response or if there is no life-threatening features from the beginning, we'll check for what we call risk of asystole. If there is no satisfactory response, we'll see what is the next step. So again, we'll deal with the patient, we'll do ABCD approach, monitor blood pressure and insert IV line and treat correctable causes and search for life-threatening features, which are shock, syncope, myocardial ischemia and infarction or severe heart failure. If any of these features are present, will give atropine 0.5 milligram intravenous bolus and check for satisfactory response. If there is no life-threatening features, we will check for what we call risk of asystole. Now, let's go here. We will we give already uh, atropine 0.5 milligram and there is satisfactory response or from the beginning there is no life-threatening condition, we will search for risk of asystole, which is history of asystole. This patient has past history. He had cardiac arrest uh, on asystole before, or right now the rhythm strip showing uh, second degree heart block mobits type two, or complete heart block with broad complex or ventricular pose more than three seconds. This is second degree heart block mobits type uh, uh, two here second degree heart block, mob type two. And this is complete heart block with complete dissociation between atrial and ventricular activity or ventricular pause. There is no QRS for more than three seconds. If any of this risk of acetol present, we'll go back to other limb or if there is no satisfactory response to atropine, we'll consider in three measures, like another atropine 0.5 milligram intravenous and repeat to maximum three milligram. Medication like isoprenaline five microgram per minute, adrenaline two to 10 microgram per minute, or other alternative drugs, and or consider transcutaneous pacemaker. Why, for how long we will give this medication or doing transcutaneous pacemaker until you seek expert help and arrange for transvenous pacemaker. 
So if there is no satisfactory response or there is risk of acetol, we will give this medication or do transcutaneous pacemaker until we find expert help and arrange for transvenous pacemaker. If there is no risk of acetol, so there is no life-threatening condition and no risk of acetol, we will just observe the patient. And these are other Alternative drugs, we can use other than atropine, isoprenaline, and adrenaline. We can give aminophilin, dopamine, glucagon, and glycopyrrolate. Okay, so what is the doses again for medications in bradycardia? Atropine will give 0.5 milligram intravenous bolus doses, maximum 3 milligram. Adren uh, isoprenaline will give 5 microgram uh, per minute intravenous infusion. Uh, so uh, if uh, one ampoule is 10 milligram, we'll put over 100 milli normal saline and we can start with three milli or we can give three milli per hour. For adrenaline, two to 10 microgram per minute intravenous infusion, we'll again put 10 milligram ampoules. Uh, uh, so this means 10 ampoules of adrenaline over 100 milli normal saline and uh, give one to two milli per hour till six milli per hour. Uh, dopamine infusion, uh, those two to 10 microgram per kilogram per minute infusion. So for 70 kilogram, uh, kilogram persons will give 8.4 till 42 milligram per hour. Aminophilin, we give aminophilin for uh, bradycardia, specific bradycardia, we give 100 to 200 milligram per minute intravenous uh, uh, slowly, and specifically in patients with inferior myocardial infarction or patient post heart transplant where atropine is contraindicated as it might increase the bradycardia and might even cause sinus arrest. And patients with spinal cord injury, these three indications for aminophilin uh, uh, IV slowly. Glucagon specifically in patient with uh, beta blocker overdose or calcium channel blocker uh, uh, cause, uh, causing bradycardia will give one milligram intravenous dose. Uh, as a pacing, uh, pacemaker or pacing of the heart, there is uh, many uh, causes, many uh, uh, ways. There is non-invasive pacing like percussion pacing where we elevate our hand, our fist, closed fist, around 15 to 20 centimeter above the patient chest and just doing percussion over the pacing over the center of the chest as if we are tabbing over the sternum. And uh, in the same time, we are monitoring the rhythm. Of course, this now is almost obsolete because the other way of non-invasive, which is transcutaneous pacing, uh, is uh, uh, available almost in every emergency department and every ICU right now. Other invasive pacing, either temporally or permanent pacemaker. Temporal pacemaker, we will insert uh, a wire through uh, uh, central venous system to reaching the heart and start temporally intravenous uh, pacing, or even permanent pacemaker, permanent transvenous pacemaker. We will insert the battery itself below uh, the left clavicle of the patient. If you want to discuss more transcutaneous pacing, uh, the principle of transcutaneous pacing, we do pacing of the heart through the uh, adhesive pads. We attach the adhesive pads to the patient bare chest and use the manual defibrillator with option of pacing to start pacemaker for the heart. What we, uh, how we can do it, we just need the, uh, uh, that manual defibrillator with the option of pacing and uh, adhesive beds, we uh, start option of pacemaker, open the pacemaker, which will give us two options, either rate and current, choose rate and choose current here. As we can see, we choose the rate and every pace uh, rhythm will give us arrow here. So first we open pacer and choose the current and rate and we'll start the current from here so we can raise the current until we find capture beats like here you will find uh, uh, 
pacing uh, spike, then followed by QRS anti-wave, pacing spike, QRS anti-wave, pacing spike, QRS anti-wave. Here happened when the current is 70 milliampere uh, current. So every base of the spike followed by QRS anti-wave, this is capture beats. Of course, we need to compare electrical capture, like we can see here on the monitor, with mechanical capture, so we can check for carotid pulse and check if the rate on the patient itself, pulse rate is the same or almost the same like this pulse rate. Uh, other uh, defibrillator will uh, give you option of pacer with the mood option, which is uh, demand mood and fixed mood. Difference between demand mood, it gives 70 p per minute this is a uh, uh, total heart rate. So if the patient own rhythm or own heart will beat around 30 beat per minute, it will complete the total heart rate to 70. Fixed mood will give 70 beat per minute, whatever if the heart uh, of the patient spontaneously uh, depolarized or no. So if, if the patient own rhythm is 30 beat per minute, he will give him also 70 beat per minute. If the patient own rhythm is 70 beat per minute, he will give him again another 70 beat per minute. This fixed mode is uh, only used if there is any electrical interference or during operation and using of diathermy or sometimes during transfer with the ambulance and uh, fear of electrical interference with movement interference. Uh, to, to check resuscitation council UK algorithm, you need to see if there is major difference or no. This is the algorithm for uh, resuscitation council UK. If you can see here, uh, this is for adult bradycardia, starting with ABCD approach is the same as ERC. Give oxygen if needed and monitor ECG, blood pressure, saturation, and do 12 lead ECG. And search for reversible causes and treat any reversible causes. Then check if there is any life-threatening signs, shock, syncope, myocardial ischemia, and heart failure. All of these are the same as ERC. If there is any life-threatening signs, we will give atropine 0.5 milligram intravenous bolus and check if there is satisfactory response or no. If there is no satisfactory response, we will give medications. Atropine again, repeat atropine 0.5 milligram, maximum three milligram, then isoprenaline five microgram uh, infusion or adrenaline two to 10 microgram per minute infusion and another uh, alternative drugs almost the same, aminophilin, dopamine, glucagon, and glycopyrrolate, and or do transcutaneous pacemaker until you have expert help and arrange for transvenous pacing. If there is no uh, uh, life-threatening signs, search for risk of acetone, recent acetone, MOBITS type 2 heart block, or complete heart block, or ventricular pose more than three uh, uh, seconds. If if there is any risk of acetone, go to the other limb. If there is no, just observe. This is the same typical algorithm for Europe, uh, uh, European uh, uh, Resuscitation Council. It's the same as Resuscitation Council UK. Other famous algorithm is the algorithm Bradycardia for American Heart Association. First here, the first point you have to uh, uh, check for apport, uh, uh, appropriateness is this bradycardia, is this is uh, a symptomatic bradycardia, like, uh, uh, and usually this bradycardia is heart rate less than 50. So sometimes the patient is just athletic patient and his uh, resting uh, heart rate is 55, for example. So this is non appropriate to treat, non appropriate to check for anything, even to do ABCD approach for him. Uh, not every athletic will do ABCD approach for him because his uh, resting pacemaker is 50 or 55 or even sometimes blue 50, sometimes in rare cases. Uh, if this is a clinical bradycardia, so identify and treat uh, any underlying cause, maintain patient airway, assess breathing if necessarily, give oxygen if desaturated, Put cardiac monitor and monitor blood pressure and pulse oximeter, insert IV line and do 12 lead ECG. And of course, treat reversible causes like hypoxia or any toxicological causes. Then search for uh, uh, risk factors or uh, as we said before, life-threatening condition uh, like hypotension, 
acutely altered mental status, signs of shock, ischemic chest discomfort, acute heart failure. Of any of these uh, uh, symptoms or this predicardia is causing hypotension or causing altered mental status or causing shock or causing ischemic heart discomfort or acute heart failure. So we'll start giving medication. If no, just observe. So here we are not searching for what we call risk of asystole. If there is no uh, uh, symptoms or if there is no uh, life-threatening conditions from this predicardia, monitor and observe. If yes, there is hypotension, or altered mental status, or signs of shock, or ischemic chest discomfort, or heart failure, we will give atropine. If atropine is ineffective, consider immediately transcutaneous pacemaker, and you can start giving medications like dopamine or epinephrine. And while doing transcutaneous pacemaker or giving dopamine or epinephrine, immediately consider expert help and as, uh, uh, arrange for transvenous pacemaker. So here we will give atropine, transcutaneous pacemaker, or you instead of transcutaneous pacemaker, if atropine not effective, consider a, a dopamine or transcutaneous pacemaker is not available. You can give dopamine or epinephrine infusion. The main uh, uh, difference here is atropine dose is one milligram, not 0.5 milligram one milligram polus and repeat three every three to five minutes maximum three milligram i'm sorry and here dopamine infusion dose is five to twenty microgram per kilogram in other uh, uh, two algorithms it was ten two to ten here five to twenty epinephrine dose is the same two to ten microgram per minute infusion and the causes here, again, it's repeated myocardial ischemia and beta blocker calcium channel blocker digoxin, hypoxia, and hyperkalemia. So the main difference is here in American Heart Association, there is no uh, risk of asystole. So it doesn't matter if this patient a complete heart block or uh, MOBITS type 2 uh, uh, second degree heart block, all the same category if there is uh, risk fact of there is signs of persistent hybrid arrhythmia, which is clinically manifested in hypotension or shock or uh, altered mental status or uh, ischemia, heart failure, give atropine. And here's the dose of atropine, one milligram intravenous can be repeated two or three milligram or dopamine infusion, which is five to 20 microgram infusion or epinephrine, which is two to 10 microgram infusion, or of course, if available, consider transcutaneous pacemaker until expert help. This is the main differences in American Heart Association bradycardia algorithm. Thank you so much. And uh, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our